don't stand the firm life cycle at all. I wish someone who knew all about this really hard topic would come and help me understand. Never fear, little Timmy. Captain Biology is here. Oh boy, thanks ever so much, Captain Biology. No problem, little Timmy. Now, come with me and let's explore the exciting world of ferns. <laughs> Hooray! See, little Timmy, we see here a fern. I don't understand what's so important about this fern's life cycle, Captain Biology. How can you say that? This fern's life cycle is extremely important. <laughs> Let me explain. You see, little Timmy, when ferns want to grow into new ferns, they release things called spores. These spores are released from the sori under the fern's leaf or frond. These tiny spores are carried away by the wind, and when they land, they grow into a gametophyte. This gametophyte has both the male and female parts needed for reproduction. The male part, the antheridia, which produces the sperm, and the female part, the archegonia, which produces the eggs. The antheridia and the archegonia develop at different times to ensure that they can reproduce with other gametophytes from different ferns. The antheridia releases sperm which have to swim to the archegonia's eggs. Since the fern doesn't provide a medium to transport these sperm, they must swim through water. This means that this reproduction can only happen in water. Once the sperm and the egg meet, they will grow into a brand new sporophyte. The old gametophyte will wither away and die, while the new young sporophyte develops into a fern. Wow! I never knew learning about ferns could be so exciting. I sure know a lot more now. I'm sure I'll pass my biology test tomorrow. Thanks, Captain Biology! You sure will, Timmy. If you ever have a biology question again, you know who to call. I sure do. This video has been brought to you by food. It's what's for eating.